we take a look at the uh, OECD's latest report on the job markets. Uh, it's 38 member countries. These are mostly developed economies in Europe, Americas, and also the Pacific. Uh, the good news is that unemployment is at its lowest level since the early 70s. Uh, the not so good news is real wages are not keeping up with inflation, with the average decline of almost 4%. The OECD analysis shows that companies could afford to pay workers more as companies' profits have, have risen by more than labor compensation. On the AI front, the report predicts that more than a quarter of jobs within the OECD uh, countries could easily be automated, but our AI has its upside. More than 60% of employees in finance and manufacturing say it's already made their jobs less dangerous or tedious. And while the OECD youth unemployment rate fell to just over 10% in April, that figure can vary across different countries. Uh, in some parts of Italy, youth unemployment is at a shocking 40%. Hermione Kitson has more. Surrounded by vintage audio systems, sound engineer Luca Mazzeo is in his element. Yes, it's decidedly satisfying. But the 28-year-old's journey to his dream job wasn't easy. I felt a big turning point in my life when I said to myself, persist, it's the right thing to do and then good things will happen. That's when the Sophia Project came to the rescue, a social enterprise based in Rome, which in the last three years has helped 120 young people find work. This work gives me a lot of satisfaction because it allows me to enter into someone's life and give them a push forward. The project is privately funded and offers mentoring, courses and a site for manual labour. In Italy, around two million young people are not in education, employment or training. According to the latest figures published by the European Commission, Italy has the third highest youth unemployment rate in the Eurozone after Spain and Greece. In May, Europe's overall youth unemployment rate was 13.9%, while in Italy it was 21.7%, and almost double that in parts of the country's south. Professor Valentina Melinciani of Lewis University says there are several economic and cultural factors at play. Low percentage of people with a tertiary degree in Italy, uh, less than 35%, uh, while the target in the EU is 45%. For those who do obtain a degree, positions are scarce because 80% of small and medium businesses are family owned and managed. It's really a problem of investing more in education, also developing technical institutes and also investing in research and development. Luca says patience is key. Throw yourself into it, do lots of interviews and don't worry if you don't find the perfect job straight away. Sound advice from someone who managed to beat the odds. Hermione Kitson, CGTN, Rome. For more about the global unemployment or employment situation in the future, I'm joined by Ryan Patel, Global Business Executive Senior Fellow, Drucker School of Management at Claremont uh, Graduate University. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Phil. You, you know, he, here's the problem, is that there are 38 countries, and every country has a slightly different problem. But what's interesting is that Europe seems to have sort of a similar set of issues, and then you have sort of the Americas, and I'm even, I would even subdivide the Americas, but let's start with um, what we just talked about in Italy, because youth unemployment or the unemployment rate for the youth has been an issue now since really uh, the, the Greek crisis uh, a long, long time ago, and even going back before then. This is a pattern that either there's not enough opportunities for the youth, or the youth don't want to do the jobs that I guess are available. Which one is it? Well, I, I think you, I, I would say there's a macro trend here, Phil, because I think the latter piece is more relevant because you think about even across Europe and across in the U.S. and, and the Americas, you've got to give jobs to places where people want to work, especially the youth, the meaningful jobs, what kind of pay. It's not always about who gets paid the most is what kind of work are you doing? What kind of hours are you giving? Do you have a balance? And these are the things that we've seen, not just from that youth of, of how they work, but also how they consume, how they push brands. And they've got more of a power. So I know in Italy it's got a higher number, but 
you know, I would not ignore this kind of a trend in other places where companies have to be more aggressive than just saying, hey, I, I can offer you the most money. What else are you giving me? Are you adding me professional, personal development? And I think this is a real conversation moving forward for many of these organizations and countries who want a more engaged workforce. But out of fairness, every company can't be that perfect company, right? There are some jobs, whether you're a taxi driver or you're a waiter or you're a bell person at a, at a hotel, I mean, there are just service-oriented jobs that, no, there isn't going to be this amazing path to become the next CEO. These are just, it's a job. You get paid, you earn a salary, and it's sort of like a starter job. It's your first couple of jobs that you do, uh, not necessarily a corporate job, and I feel like a lot of the youth, or those at least they're looking to, to go in this industry, they either don't want to do it, or they think it's maybe beneath them, or maybe they're overeducated. I mean, that's another issue as well. If, if you've gone to college and you've done all this great stuff, you're like, well, why would I do these jobs? These jobs, I was trained to be something else, and I don't want to be an Uber driver, for example. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I can't answer on the, the extremes on, on what their mindset is, but there's one thing here that's clear, Phil. If I could get paid on a side gig for my less than my hours instead of having to go to, you know, work full time, I think these are the options for the youth. I mean, well, not an option for me, but you, for the youth, their, their side hustle can give them something to well, pay to where they can't because of the digital economy and how marketing creators, I know I'm picking on one niche, but... I think that's part of this uh, equation, I think. I think you're onto something. I don't want to disclose how young you are because we don't want to get into that. But the point is, <laughs> we didn't have those opportunities. And today, right. some of the kids I speak with, and I'll call them kids only because they're younger, they do have a lot of options, as you said, the side gigs, right? They could, they could do creative work. They could do high-end professional work. They could do consulting work. They can make their own hours. They can say, I want to get paid X amount of dollars per hour. They do their own, they're at their own little mini company. Are these folks counted? When we see these unemployment numbers from the OECD, are they counted in that? How is that incorporated into those figures? I think in all the numbers, that, they're not counted accurately, in my opinion, because it's really hard to tell, are they full-time, are they unemployed? And to even add another point to this, Phil, we live in a world where somebody can get a design certificate online, they don't have to go to graduate school and still get paid a six-figure job, right? I mean, the educational aspect is not, you don't have to wait four my, years. My, so friend, my friend hired a plumber, four of them, in fact. They were making over $200 per hour. And, and that, by the way, if you're doing the math, that's 400000 a year. That's pretty darn good if you're saying, well, I don't want to go to college because uh, there's a lot of people who do go to college that make nowhere near that, nowhere near that amount. Let's talk quickly about yeah. Americas here because I, I want to shift away from Europe. And this is also relevant in Asia is that here in the U.S. we have 1.6 jobs available for every person looking for a job. So in other words, there isn't enough people, right? So if we look out five years from now, we can see where the shortages are obviously going to be. How is a country, whether it's the United States or Japan or China or any sort of developed country, going to reconcile this problem? Because this isn't unique to just us. We're seeing this around the world. There's not a, there's, there's not a cookie cutter answer to this because we haven't faced anything like this. And on top of that, uh, one of the things in the OECD that popped out to me was the AI mention um, and technology mention that they had to address going forward. So why I bring that up is the jobs that we talk about now could be the skill set is a little bit different in the next six, seven months, or even a year you to two years of what they're looking for. So while these companies are looking for people specifically, they are on a freeze too, finding what are they really, what's the job description? Is it the same thing? Has it changed? And so to me, I know that they're looking for people I also think there's a pause of what type of person that they're looking for and how are they filling that in. So I think there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a distance here. It's not just for many of these companies or some of them. Here, I need to go hire somebody. Let me go find who's out there. I don't know if they really know what they want in the future, and I think that's part of the the issue of hiring. Yeah, no, I I would agree. I would agree with you that it's not just people they want. They want good people. And these good people want to work for good employers, and we've got to find a better way to, to match these two uh, folks together. Uh, Ryan, always good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Phil.